Good morning to all of us in NLF Utsav and I uh, want to thank God for this opportunity once again uh, for me to just come and be with you all and bring God's word. I want to thank uh, Pastor Shannon, Pastor Samir and Pastor Arun and all the leadership team for giving me this opportunity once again. I have titled today's message as a kingdom mindset. How can we have a kingdom mindset? And uh, I'm going to read for us from Matthew chapter 20 and verses 1 to 16. And we're going to hear this uh, famous parable that Jesus speaks about the kingdom. So that's Matthew 20 and verses 1 to 16. So I'll just read that. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his work, into his vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who, who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you've made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So, the last will be first and the first will be last. You will have heard about this parable so many times. And we understand a few things that the vineyard that the owner is speaking about, that Jesus is speaking about is the kingdom of God and the land owner is God. So we want to learn three aspects from this particular parable as we look at you know, how can we have a kingdom mindset as we live in this world outside. The first aspect that we want to learn is that God's heart is for all people. That's what like we see over here in this parable that Jesus described. You know, he, he, this particular owner goes out to the, uh, to, uh, he goes out outside and then he calls in those workers. It says in verse six and verse seven, about five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. What we see over here is that God's heart is for all people. And he does not want anyone outside to be idle and wasting away their life. He wants all of them to be part of his kingdom, to be, to be working in his vineyard. And that's the heart of the owner that we see over here. That's the heart of God that we see over here. And another amazing thing that we see over here is that God himself or the owner himself is such a great worker. We see that early in the morning, he goes out to bring in people into his vineyard. And then at nine in the morning, then at 12 noon, then at three, then at five also, you know, one hour before uh, the people would finish for the day, 
he goes out and brings in people who would work for his vineyard and so he himself is such a great worker i was thinking that he did not put an advertisement if there was ever an opportunity and whatever way they could do it he did not put an advertisement he did not send his servant outside to call the workers in he didn't even put a board outside saying that we need workers he himself went over there outside to the people who are there you know where their lives were being wasted or they were sitting idle he himself goes there he looks into their eyes probably looking into their eyes seeing uh, you know their state and their life you now so he looks at them and then he brings them one by one into his vineyard now here also you would notice that there are marketplaces here we would say the nakas you know and so in these nakas you would find these workers and uh, the contractors uh, or, or the the flat owners like if they want to get any job done then they would go to these nakas and bring those people from there and what joy fills their heart like you know when when somebody chooses them or somebody selects them for their work so they know that today they'll be employed or for some week or for a month they'll be employed they'll be getting some money and so they'll be able to feed their family no and so that's what like we see over here as you see over here also god goes out at various times and even at 5 in the evening now we can you know i think like when we even when it is 12 noon if the workers are still there and not selected for any kind of work they've not been chosen for any kind of work you can imagine uh, the disappointment on their faces and suppose they've been there till 5 o'clock they've lost all hope of getting any work or getting any money or in any way feeding their family but you know the land owner over here he goes out even at 5 o'clock so that they will find work they will do something and they'll be able to earn something god's heart is for all people and so you know what we see over here is that he is god is not you know calculate he is not focused on the profit he is not worried about return roi return on investment he is worried about people wasting away and destroying their lives he is not in that sense business focused but he is people focused and that is so true when we are people focused then our business also prospers when we are only looking at profit then many times like you know uh, things don't end up the way we want it to end and so he knows that there is room for more he is generous and lavish in the way he wants to partner and share his wealth with people i was thinking that you know there could be two kinds of workers working in his vineyard when when they see their owner with such a posture with such an attitude in a sense like uh, you know so there could be like two kinds of workers one kind i mean one group of workers they would feel my boss is so foolish he has no business sense at all he will waste all his wealth on such strategies and go bankrupt and maybe this group of workers may say it's so unfortunate that i have to work for a man like him but there could be another group of workers who may feel my boss is so kind you know he is giving work and being a blessing to people and their families he is such a great man i am so fortunate and it's such a joy to be working for a man like him so the first aspect that we see and we want to learn from is that you know would our hearts go out for all people god's heart is for all people and so he would want us to share to give to invite to partner to work hard to be foolish many times to get people into the kingdom of god and not just looking at our lives not just looking at what am i going to get out of this so that's what god's heart is and that's what our heart also needs to be i regularly keep in touch uh, with my gym trainer and uh, he's such a lovely friend 
some months back we've had a meal together i think about 3 weeks back we again had a cup of tea together and uh, it's such a joy to talk to him he comes from a different background but he's really struggled to come up in life and and it is uh, you know it's it was so exciting to just hear his story the kind of work that he has done to just come up in life and to grow in our friendship with one another uh, the last time that he came he said that his father had a brain hemorrhage and uh, one side of his father had almost become paralyzed and so we spent some time praying uh, for his father and he was he looked quite disappointed and upset and uh, we could just sunita and myself could just pray for him and we were trusting god that uh, god would meet with him god would minister to him and while he was going you know he was just telling us i don't have many friends with whom i can open my heart and share what i'm going through and i was just thinking it's true uh, god's heart is for all people and he wants us also to reach out to all kinds of people so that we would be their friends i was about uh, uh, two weeks back i was visiting a pastor's house sunit and myself we were visiting a pastor's house house and his daughter was telling us that she had a friend who lost his dad and mom uh, due to covid and after his dad and mom died this boy committed suicide ah uh, it was we we were so upset at just hearing this we were just feeling that you know we need to make uh, we need to build friendships with people outside so that you know even in their hopeless situations our god who lives in us christ in us who is the hope of glory now we'll be able to share this hope to others even in their most desperate and hopeless situations so that's the first thing that we learn that god's heart is for all people and he wants us to reach out to all people the second aspect that we want to learn is that god's reward is the privilege to work god's reward is a privilege to work we uh, read uh, in uh, that particular parable verses 10 to 12 so when those came who were hired first they expected to receive more but each one of them also received a denarius when they ex- received it they began to grumble against the landowner these who were hired last worked only one hour they said and you've made them equal to us who borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day the question that we need to ask ourselves is what is the reward is the reward the money or just the blessing or is the reward the privilege to work in his kingdom for having been chosen you know the privilege to partner with him the privilege to belong you know to god's family and to enjoy his fellowship with a fellowship with him and fellowship with one another what is the reward and so what we see over here the landowner or god trying to tell or re or tell us or speak to us is that the real reward is the privilege to partner and to work with him uh, so what we see over here is that like they grumbled instead these people were given the opportunity to work they were able to earn they were able to you know be a blessing to their family those were enough reasons for them for them to be grateful but yet they grumbled and so i want to say that the feeling of belonging and the the opportunity to participate that cannot be given a value that cannot be given a you know what what we get and what we expect you know is nothing compared to the fact that we belong to this family and we have him as our father that's of greatest value and for us to experience that joy and peace and that fellowship God the Father had to sacrifice his son for us to be part of this family and to experience this joy that's why this is much more valuable than any blessing also that we can get blessings they come 
sometimes and sometimes we do go through difficult times our life cannot be dependent on those blessings but our, our, our life is anchored in this fact that we are part of his family he is our father we are secure in him we enjoy his fellowship we have everything in him that is of much greater value than any kind of blessing that we can ever receive it so i want to say that we can't just work to get but we can give ourselves to something we feel that god has called us to so that is of much greater value now the workers who were called at 5 in the evening they were not just given money if they were given money then that's charity at 5 also they were called to work and be part of the work of the vineyard so that is partnership that is belonging now we can imagine that the whole day you know they would have felt disappointed rejected absolutely felt like their their entire day has been a waste but the other people would have enjoyed work the whole day and so enjoying work the whole day that is more precious than what you get at the end of the day so i just want to say that we need to grow in our understanding of the grace of work you know work partnership partnering with god contribution belonging to his family we need to grow in our understanding you know in all these aspects so i just want to say that like you know in in all our churches there or you know each of us and many of us are part of various teams the worship team the children's ministry team you know the serving team the pa team the social work team and many times you know we can have this thought what am i going to get at the end of this lord lord i have i'm 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 participating i'm giving myself to this and so at the end of it i will get something i don't know whether that's the right posture and right that's the right attitude but when god calls us chooses us to be part of these teams our pastors should be lord i am so grateful that i can participate that i can give you bless me to give you bless me to partner you bless me to work together with people what a joy it is that's the greatest reward there is a sense of security belonging and identity that's much greater than what i can receive yes god will shower his blessing his favor uh, his grace upon us it will be added unto us as we serve god in his kingdom but to belong that privilege to belong that itself is the greatest reward so i just want to say that in this time of the pandemic may we not be people who will grumble lord why is this happening but may we be people who will always be thankful to god and say lord i thank you that i belong to this family and that when when i seek you in you is all my provision and i am blessed i was listening to this song uh, way maker and the very famous song promise keeper you know, and uh, so uh, uh, in one of the songs this uh, person was singing he was sharing his testimony and he was saying that he came from a broken home and his father had left him and uh, he was living with his mother and one of the days uh, they were told that the next day they were supposed to leave that particular place they were staying in a rented place they were supposed to leave and they had no idea how god would provide the next home or the money for the next place and so that particular night when when he was in his house he heard uh, the sound of sobbing his his mom crying you know from her, from her room and so he goes in to find out what what is the problem what's the difficulty and so as he goes in and, and slightly opens the door he sees his mother on her knees and just you know crying out to god and he sees that these were not cries of 
you know complain or pain but she was just you know crying out to god in thanksgiving thanking god for his faithfulness all these years of their life of her life god's provision you know god's protection god's healing and so those were cries of thanksgiving and gratefulness and praise and of confidence saying lord thus far you have provided and you have protected us tomorrow also you will provide and you will protect us and so he realized those are not cries of pain but those were cries of gratitude to just you know knowing that we belong to him and he will take care because he's a faithful god irrespective of what is happening right now in our own situations and lives and so i just want to say that the first aspect is god's heart is for all people and the second aspect that we learn is that god's reward is a privilege to work and to partner with him and third and the final thing is that god's truth provokes our natural thinking verse 14 to 16 it says take your pay and go i want to give the one who was hired last the same as i have given you don't i have the right to do what i want with my own money or are you envious because i am generous so the last will be first and the first will be last what we see over here is that god's economy is different from our economy he provokes our you know self seeking nature our natural uh, you know uh, uh, the way we think in the natural way he he provokes our fair kind of thinking or a humanistic kind of thinking he challenges us with his lavish extravagant unconditional and unreasonable heart of grace for people that's what we see from god's heart and in a way he is saying that that's the same way we found our way into the kingdom of god because of his lavish selfless unconditional love we found a place in his kingdom how can we place conditions on other people when he did not have any conditions for us and that's how like these people also were invited not that like he found those early workers worthy but irrespective of who they were they were chosen and they were called to work but right now they were grumbling so in a uh, so in the real sense they were not losers at all they had the privilege to work they had a sense of fulfillment and their sense of belonging a sense of worth a sense of security that all their needs will be taken care of and they enjoyed that for the longest period of time compared to people who came later you know they would have been outside feeling disappointed dejected but these people enjoyed working with the owner in the owners of field so i just want to say that you know when we feel a sense of loss even in the provision that god has made for us when we feel a sense of loss then it's true the first shall be last then we will end up being the last but when we sense a kind of a gain in a loss kind of a situation okay even in a loss kind of like the mother when we sense a gain even in a loss kind of a situation then the first shall be first the first shall be first that's what we see jesus saw a gain in the cross which was a kind of a loss which was a kind of a curse in those days he saw uh, a gain in that he saw you know uh, he saw that as being obedient to god and god exalted him and so his name became the name above all names he's the king of kings the lord of lords the alpha and the omega the first and the last the beginning and the end and so he became the first all the way that is so amazing hallelujah he saw again even in the loss and god exalted him to the highest position and so that's the way jesus won the hearts of people and he is now winning the hearts of people in the world 
towards him so i just want to say that we need a different kind of a love towards others a love that is kind of like unfair unconditional unreasonable unexpected and unjust otherwise we'll find it difficult to draw people to christ so you know god's economy is different from our economy so that's a third aspect that we see where god's truth provokes our natural thinking so i just want to say that these three aspects that we need to have a heart for all people god's heart is for all people we need to reach out to all people we need to realize that the real reward is belonging to him the real reward is in him and not just what we get and we need to grow in unconditional generosity i was reading uh, about a man by the name uh, fritz krisler he was a austrian and a very famous violinist he earned they say that he earned uh, a good fortune you know uh, playing in concerts and making compositions but he kind of like generously just gave it away and uh, once like when he was there for a concert he saw a very good violin it was kind of like an exquisite uh, piece and so he desired to have that and so when he went to the owner to ask about the price you know the price was too high exorbitant uh, for him so he didn't have the money to buy it and so he thought that he will collect some money over some period of time and then go and buy uh, this particular violin and so uh, he collected money goes back to this uh, so buyer uh, you know who was uh, he, he goes to the man who was uh, selling this or who had the, the owner and he asked them for the uh, asked him for the violin and this man says uh, that he has already kind of like sold it to someone else and he says that you can find the violin with this particular person and so he goes to that particular person and uh, uh, said that would you be interested in selling and this man said no i am not interested in selling this piece at all and so krishna was very disappointed and uh, you know as he was just walking out of that man's house uh, he turned around and asked this man can i just play this violin once uh, before i just uh, leave this place and so this man said that's fine you can play the violin and so with his permission he played the violin and you know he made uh, such a good music over there you know and uh, you know that music just filled that particular room and it was so heart moving and uh, it touched the heart of this particular owner and as krishna was about to leave this man said to him i have no right to keep that to myself i have no right to keep this violin to myself he said it's yours mr krishna take it into the world and let the people hear it i want to say friends to all of us and also to myself you know the seed of the kingdom has been sown into our hearts we have no right to keep it to ourselves we need to take it into the world and let the people hear it and be blessed so as i close I just want to say that let's be people who will go all out to reach out to people in the world with God's love so that they may be brought into the kingdom that's the kingdom mindset that we need to have and let us do let us ask God to give us the grace to generously go forth and reach out to people so that they may be found in him god bless you Thank you.